The next organ that we're going to focus on that has endocrine capabilities is our pancreas. Now the pancreas is found in our abdominal cavity. It's found below the liver and in the back of our stomach. So if this is the stomach and this is the liver, then this is our pancreas shown in purple. Now, the pancreas doesn't only have endocrine capabilities, in fact, when we'll discuss the digestive system of the human body, we'll see that the pancreas can also act as an exocrine gland, but since we're on the topic of the endocrine system in this lecture, we're only going to focus on the endocrine capability of our pancreas. Now, the collection of millions of cells inside the pancreas that have this endocrine capability, the ability to produce hormones and release these hormones into our bloodstream are known as the islets of Langerhans. And there are four major types of cells that make up, that constitute the islets of Langerhans. These cells are alpha cells, beta cells, delta cells, and gamma cells. So let's discuss each one of these cells let's discuss the hormone that each one of these cells releases and what the function of that specific hormone is so basically each one of these four types of cells that make up the islets of Langerhans are capable of producing and secreting its own hormone so let's begin with alpha cells so alpha cells are basically those cells that produce and secrete a peptide hormone known as glucagon. And glucagon is stimulated and released when we have low glucose concentration inside our blood, for example, when we are fasting. Now, certain people experience a, uh, a condition known as hypoglycemia. And hypoglycemia simply means we have an abnormally low concentration of glucose inside our blood and what happens is these alpha cells release glucagon and what glucagon does as we'll see in just a moment is ultimately increase the concentration of glucose inside our blood and that means the cells can use that glucose to basically create ATP and use it as an energy source. So we mentioned that glucagon is a peptide hormone and that means it's water soluble and so it can easily dissolve inside our blood and it doesn't need any protein carrier to transport it inside our blood. Now the fact that our glucagon is a peptide hormone also means it is not lipid soluble and that means it cannot actually pass across the cell membrane so what glucagon does is it finds the target cell which is usually the cell inside the liver known as the liver cells it binds onto the membrane of that liver cell and it initiates a secondary messenger system and what it basically does is it causes our liver cells to break down glycogen. Glycogen is the polymer that consists of glucose molecules. And what these liver cells do is they break down glycogen into glucose and release that glucose into our blood. And this increases the concentration of glucose inside, inside our blood. So the process by which our liver cells and other cells break down glycogen into glucose is known as glycogenolysis so our glucagon basically stimulates the price the process of glycogenolysis now when we have high concentrations of glucose of a uh, glucagon glucagon can also basically make or stimulate our adipose uh, tissue the fat cells inside the adipose tissue to break down triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol and this can basically empty out into our bloodstream and the cells can use, can then pick up the fatty acids and our glycerol and form new glucose molecules and then release those glucose molecules into our blood plasma. And this increases the concentration of glucose inside our blood. So the method by which cells use non-carbohydrate materials such as glycerol to basically form glucose is known as gluconeogenesis. So glucagon stimulates the process of glycogenolysis as well as gluconeogenesis. Now, 
The overall result of, the, of a glucagon released by alpha cells is to basically raise glucose levels. And when the concentration of glucose increases to a certain amount, that can basically inhibit the release of glucagon into our blood. Now, glucagon is also inhibited by other proteins, by other enzymes, for example, insulin, as well as somatostatin, and we'll discuss these in just a moment. Now, we said that glucagon is stimulated by low concentrations of glucose. It can also be stimulated by other, pro by other hormones. For example, it's stimulated by CCK, which is a hormone that stands for uh, cholecystokinin. So cholecystokinin is the hormone that can also stimulate the release of glucagon into our blood. Now, let's move on to beta cells. So beta cells in our islets of uh, Langergans uh, can also basically release a peptide hormone, but this peptide hormone is known as insulin. And insulin acts antagonistically with respect to our glucagon, and we'll see why, what that actually means in just a moment. So basically, our glucagon is released when we have low concentrations of glucose, but insulin is released when we have high concentrations of glucose, for example, right after we ate. So let's suppose we just ate a meal and our body broke down our glucose and now we have plenty of glucose circulating inside our blood. So what happens is glucagon is inhibited, but insulin is stimulated. And these beta cells basically release insulin, which is a peptide hormone. It's a water-soluble hormone, so it can easily dissolve inside our blood just like glucagon can. And insulin also binds onto the cell membrane of our target cells, the liver cells or the muscle cells, and it basically stimulates the opposite process that we discussed earlier. Now what happens is, because we have plenty of our, um, because we have plenty of glucose and amino, and amino acids floating around inside our bloodstream, what insulin does is it causes the cell membrane to become more permeable to amino acids and to glucose. And now glucose and amino acids go into our cells, into liver cells and muscle cells, and those cells basically use the amino acids to form protein and they use the glucose to form our glycogen. Now, what insulin also does is it causes our fat cells to take up glycerol and fatty acids and to form our triglycerides. So what our insulin ultimately aims to do is to basically decrease the concentration of our glucose found inside our blood. So these two hormones are essential in controlling the concentration of glucose and amino acids and fatty acids found inside our blood. So insulin is inhibited by low glucose concentrations, which is the opposite of glucagon. So we see when glucagon is inhibited, our insulin is activated. And when our glucagon is activated, the insulin is inhibited. Now insulin can also be inhibited by other hormones, just like glucagon can. For example, norepinephrine, the hormone that is released by our adrenal gland can also inhibit um, our insulin hormone. So let's take a look at the following diagram that basically describes the connection between glucagon and insulin. So let's suppose we are fasting for a long time and because we are fasting, that means the glucose concentration inside our blood is low. So let's suppose we are experiencing hypoglycemia. So that basically means the concentration of glucose inside our blood plasma is low and our cells in the body cannot obtain the proper amount of glucose. So what the body does is our pancreas uses the alpha cells to release glucagon and then glucagon basically goes on and binds onto protein receptors on the membrane of target cells in the liver and it basically causes the process of glycogen 
glycogenolysis, the breakdown of glycogen into glucose. We have the process of gluconeogenesis, the use of our non-carbohydrate sources to produce glucose, and then the breakdown of triglycerides into fatty acids and into glycerol, which is ultimately used to form glucose. And all this glucose that is formed is dumped into our blood plasma. And this ultimately increases the concentration of glucose inside our blood plasma. Now, when our concentration is high, the glucagon is eventually inhibited. And when it rises high enough, we basically have insulin that is released by our beta cells. And what the insulin does is the opposite of what glucagon does. So insulin acts antagonistically with respect to the glucagon. So because we have a lot of glucose and amino acids and fatty acids inside our blood, let's suppose after we ate, what happens is the insulin causes our cells to become more permeable to glucose and amino acids. And that causes the glucose to leave the blood plasma and uh, enter our cell. And we use the glucose to form glycogen in our liver cells, in our muscle cells. We uptake our amino acids and we form proteins. And we also have our triglyceride synthesis. So our fat cells inside our adipose tissue take up fatty acids and glycerol and form our triglyceride. So eventually this lowers the amount of glucose and amino acid found inside our uh, blood plasma. So this is the method by which our body basically controls the amount of sugar found inside our blood as well as the concentration of amino acids and fats. Now the last two cells are the delta cells and the gamma cells. So the delta cells are the cells that basically release a special type of peptide hormone known as our somatostatin, which is the protein that we mentioned earlier that inhibits our glucagon. Now somatostatin doesn't only inhibit glucagon, it also actually inhibits our insulin. So somatostatin has a wide range of functions and one of it and one of its function is to inhibit the release of both glucagon and our insulin. And finally, we also have a type of islet of Langerhans, a type of cell in that region known as gamma cells. And these cells are responsible for secreting a type of hormone known as our pancreatic polypeptide. And this hormone is basically believed to regulate various activities of the pancreas, such as our excretion of the pancreatic hormones that we just discussed. So these are the four different types of cells that make up the islets of Langerhans inside our pancreas. And the islets of Langerhans are those cells that contain endocrine ability. So the ability to synthesize a hormone and release that hormone into our bloodstream.